What if Godzilla was in the Dragons franchise? Would he dominate them? Would Godzilla be classified as a title class dragon? And what would happen if a fight broke down between him and the other alpha class dragons? This topic has been in our minds for quite a while and now we are going to showcase to you what we think might happen if the G-Man was suddenly discovered or teleported to this other universe. It would be helpful if you guys put in your thoughts in the comments section below. So let's get on with the topic at hand. As we all know, Godzilla is a living and breeding titan. In this video, we shall teleport the legendary 2019 version of him to the franchise of How to Train Your Dragon. This version is almost uh, 400 feet tall and weighs nearly 100,000 tons, something that the MonsterVerse fans know well by now. And for the same reason, the non-dragon fans, we shall discuss a bit about the world of the dragons and how many types of these mysterious beasts are flying around. The dragons of the franchise are mythical beasts that inhabit the northern regions of the planet. Discovered by the Vikings of the region, they were feared and respected. The Vikings battled and treated these dragons as wild destructive animals that wreak havoc wherever they are found. But events of the first movie brought a clearer picture that these dragons were sentient beasts that have feelings and have a variety of powers. We also find out in the movies and shows that there are quite a few of these dragons that rival the MonsterVerse Titans in size and power. Dragons like the Red Death, the Bewilderbees, the Screaming Death would hold their ground against some of the Titan super species. So let's combine both these awesome creatures in one universe. Let's say that the Viking sailors suddenly discovered Godzilla swimming and surfacing on one of their islands. Given that he is an aquatic monster, he would be considered a tidal class dragon the biggest yet discovered as his total length would be more than 800 feet long, considering that his height is 400 feet with a 550 foot long tail and after adjustments of taking away a bit of his height from the waist down and the addition of the length of the tail, it would bring him to be around 300 feet longer than the largest dragon, the Bewilderbeast, which is 520 feet long and twice the length of the Red Death. The question now arises, would Godzilla dominate over all the other dragons or would he simply shrug them off and continue on his own solitary existence? Given that most of the dragons are small and medium sized, well below the G-Man's radar, he would probably not give a fudge about their existence at all. The ones that are smaller than or at the size of the Typhoomerang wouldn't even be considered or recognized by him as a threat. Also given that the temperament of the 2019 Godzilla is calm and protective of other species, he would simply let them be. Others, however, like the Submariper and underwater tidal class dragon, might face the same fate as another titan in the MonsterVerse, the Mark Yeager, which was also an oceanic titan that was skilled with a very atomic powerful breath. Underwater so let's say another dragon called the Shellfire, the gigantic 200 feet long dragon that carries a viking ship on its back was to face against the G-Man. As a titan wing, the Shellfire is one of the largest dragons to appear in the series. It has two long and slightly curved horns on the sides of its head, a smaller horn on its nose, and relatively long wings that don't really appear to be broad enough to enable the dragon to fly. Overall, the Shellfire roughly resembles a trilobite and a horseshoe crab combined together. It is capable of shooting a series of plasma charged boulders at a range of over a mile. But as we saw that Godzilla fight his atomic breath at Ghidorah from well over a mile in Boston, the Shellfire has no chance in hell. Well, what about the Red Death and its other subspecies, the Green and the Purple Death? Well, these dragons are the ones responsible for centuries of human-dragon conflict. They were the ones to be seen showing a malicious temperament, demanding other dragons to feed them and actually hunting and killing others for food. Its head is heavily armed with a nasal horn and coral-shaped frill and with jaws that are lined up with huge sword-like teeth. The Red Death possesses three pairs of eyes that give it little to no blind spot at all. This dragon would actually be something that Godzilla hates and hunts in order to restore the natural balance. This dragon is 400 feet long, half than that of the G-Man. It is 100 feet tall, one quarter of the G-Man, but has a 550 feet wide wingspan. 
It is equipped with methane-based flame jets as its dragon breath, which although destructive for humans and other species, it would hardly affect the G-Man as he is basically heat resistant. The only way she can get out alive is by flying away, which she is pretty fast and agile. Even so, the Red Death showed no lack of speed during flight, as we can see in the movie, as it was fast enough to catch up with Toothless in the air, and Toothless, the Night Fury, is one of the fastest out there. So, heading out to the last of the Alpha Dragons, the Bewilderbeast. Would this titled Glass Dragon actually fare the same as the other dragons, or would it actually stand its ground? This is the biggest dragon out there, and it is one that is also aquatic in nature as well. It is 550 feet long and 160 feet tall. It possesses two elephant-like tusks, which it uses to ram against other opponents and even stab them to death with it. A Bewilderbeast's most notable and feared ability is to burst streams of ice turning water on contact. The Bewilderbeast's breath is also so intensely cold as it regurgitates the water with so great a force that when it hits the target, it breaks and tears it apart and freezes mid-splash. Anyway, if this dragon met the G-Man, how would it fare? Well, our guess is that, as with the other dragons, a direct conflict would prove disastrous for it as Godzilla has the advantage of size and range of its atomic breath. Unlike the Red Death, however, it would not be able to escape via any way. The Red Death had the ability of flight and being very fast at that. The Bewilderbeast, however, could only shield itself under the icy fortress from Godzilla for a while. However, if he was lucky enough to stab Godzilla with the tusk, and given the fact that it has an advantage of being way shorter, it would mean a high probability, wait for it, a high probability of giving the G-Man a snip snip in the godly nuts, therefore getting itself enough time to escape while Godzilla grabs its crutch and cries out with pain. So in short, if the G-Man was in any way transported into the world of dragons, he would have a blast. No living species of dragon at present has the ability to knock him down for the win. He would be the king of all dragons and given the fact that from the monsterverse the super species also respond to an alpha call, I would bet the other dragons would gladly follow the G-Man as the new king. But this topic of the dragons and the titans alpha call is gonna be discussed properly in another video. Anyway, this was a blast, an atomic blast, and sad to say we have come to the end of the video. So do like, share and subscribe for more of Godzilla and Dragons contents.